Today we are talking about Express LRS receivers, and specifically these two receivers from RadioMaster. These aren't like the Express LRS receivers I've looked at before, because these are direct PWM receivers. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at these two new receivers from RadioMaster. We'll tear them down, get them under the microscope, and at the end, I will share with you some thoughts. Now, just to be clear up front, RadioMaster did send me these receivers for free. However, they have not seen this video before it's been published. I have not been paid to make this video, and as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Anyway, let's get on with it, and let's take a look at what these are all about. Okay, so what we have here from RadioMaster is two new ExpressRS receivers with built-in PWM outputs. We have the ER5A, which RadioMaster say is ideal for fixed-wing or ear-based applications, and the ER5C, which they say is ideal for ground-based applications such as car, rover, or boat. Both models have five PWM outputs of which four are proportional and one is switched under Express LRS 2.0. However, if you use Express LRS 3.0, you can have up to five proportional outputs. They support 8.4 volt HV servos. They have a voltage range of 4.5 to 8.4 volt. They do come with Express LRS 2.0 installed as standard and they weigh just 6.6 grams. Now, RadioMaster really has been smashing it out the park with regards to their Express LRS equipment over the last few months. We had the new TX16S Mark II, which had Express LRS built in, followed by the Zorro, and now the new TX12, which again has a built-in Express LRS system too. We then had their new receivers, and now we have these, and they really are building out a massive ecosystem of Express LRS compatible hardware, and now we've got these which are going to allow other users within the FPV, fixed wing and drone based communities to come on board to Express LRS with those servo outputs on board. What we'll do now is jump in and take a closer look at each one to show you what they're like. Then we'll pop the covers off and have a look at what the build quality is like. So I've just got them both out of the packet and I just wanted to show you a couple of things before we jump into the receivers. What's really nice with these as well is the fact that RadioMaster are including this nice little instruction leaflet and you've got an extra antenna as well. They come fitted with a short antenna, but there is a longer antenna included in the pack as well, depending on what your configuration in your aircraft, boat, car, etc., is going to be. It's just nice to see that leaflet in there because it's going to help people who haven't had experience with Express LRS understand what the situation is with the receiver. Whilst it doesn't cover everything, it gives you a basic overview of the receiver itself, the flashing LEDs, and it just gives you a great starting point. Okay, so jumping in a little bit closer, you can see the receivers now in a bit more detail. So the ER5A, again, is designed for ear-based applications. You have all of the PWM outputs on the front of this one, or the back, depending on which way you want to look at it. There's then a boot button here, and then you've simply got a flat base where you can stick it down into your model with the antenna sticking out of the top. For the ER5C, we still have the same amount of outputs. It's simply the case that they are vertical instead of horizontal in the casing. So rather than coming out the front or back, they're coming out of the top, again, with the boot button and the little antenna there as well. You can see we have our channels, one, two, three, four, five, and then we have our bat button as well. And if you look down, they do show the signal wires there, just showing you what pins do what, and the situation with that there is exactly the same. The real nice thing with these is just how small these are compared to other traditional PWM receivers. Whilst they haven't got quite as many outputs as some others, these are much, much smaller than you would traditionally have from some of the other manufacturers. Whilst talking about size, the ES5A is 37 by 19 by 13 mil, and the ES5C is 30 by 19 by 13 based on my measurements. That is basically the same size as an XSR from the old FR Sky systems. And whilst I know this isn't a PWM receiver, it just shows you how small some of these new Express LRS receivers can be, even with these PWM outputs included. 
Just popping the covers off to show you what they're like inside, the first thing you'll notice is that they are identical. The only difference between these two receivers is the pin layout. This has pins that are vertical and simply go straight out the top, whereas this, the ES5A, has horizontal pins that go out the back of the board. On this side, you can see we have our chipset, we have our little Wi-Fi antenna, and then if I flip this board over, you can see we have our UFL, second chipset, some sundry circuitry, which we'll take a look at under the microscope, and then our PWM pins, which are horizontal out the bottom. Okay, so just walking you around the PCB under the microscope, you can see the UFL connection here for the antenna. We've got a boot button moving around then down this side of the board. You can just see some sundry component, and then we head down towards the PWM pins. If we then just move around, we can see our S1281 chipset, which is the RF chipset. We have our connection there going to the little filter before it goes into the chipset. And then if we go up this side, we can see our 52 megahertz crystal oscillator. We can see the rest of the components there, as well as what is most likely a voltage regulator up there with a 3.3 volt labeled pad. Overall, on this side of the board, there isn't a huge amount to see compared to any other Express RS receiver. The soldering looks good, everything looks tidy as we would expect from Radio Master. Hopping over to the other side of the board, in the top right corner, you will find the Wi Fi antenna. Now, this is a ceramic chip antenna. They haven't actually put a PCB trace antenna like we see on a lot of receivers, but that's there and that's going to give us our Wi Fi functionality for the firmware updates as well as the configuration now. If we then go down, we again can see our main chipset, which is the ESP8285, as we would expect. Then we've just got some sundry components before we head down to the pads for the pins. Again, some resistors going to each of the pin outputs. So you can see one there with a the resistor, two with a resistor, three, and then four, five, and six for our power. And then if we go up the other side of the board, it is pretty empty. There really isn't a lot to see here. If I just rotate it round so we can see our chipset a bit easier and then tilt that so you can see it. The observations I have from looking around the build quality of the board is very, very good as always from Radio Master. It is right up there with what we've seen from all of the Radio Master receivers in the past. The setup of these PWM proportional receivers is fairly simple. You simply have the pins, going by resistors to the ESP8285. Then you've just got some basic circuitry around that. And then on the other side of the board, you just have your RF chipset, which is again that SX1281, the oscillator, voltage regulation, and that really is it. Overall, there really isn't a lot to see here. Now, for those who didn't know, Express RS added support for what is now known as direct PWM output for receivers in version 2.0. That is what these receivers are using. As you've seen under the microscope, there is no additional circuitry for the PWM outputs. It is simply that the PWM output goes to the main chipset, and that was first introduced in 2.0. In that version, you had the option of up to four channels max with one switch channel, but that's been expanded in version 3.0 that has just been released. You can see there are multiple outputs available for you. You have the output channel, you can invert it, and you can also set the failsafe position as well. In version 3.0, you can also make more changes than you've seen in the past, being able to independently set the rate for each output as well. PWM output range on the direct Express LRS receivers is 988 to 2012, pretty much in the same range we would have expected from most systems, with a default value set to 1500 for all except channel 3, which defaults to 988. As I've said, there are also a lot of changes in version 3.0 that has now been released that improves upon this PWM standard as well within the Express LRS world. It's really nice to see Radio Master bring out these receivers with PWM outputs, and it really is good to start to see Express LRS expand outside of what we've seen in traditional FPV into more traditional fixed wing and having receivers that are going to drag in users that may not have been interested in the system 
before. Whilst today we may only have five outputs on these, I'm sure we're going to see bigger receivers in the future with more outputs, especially with that new version 3 firmware. As you've seen under the microscope, the overall build quality of these looks really, really good, just like we've seen with everything else from RadioMaster, and they really are becoming one of the best hardware manufacturers that we see in the Express RS world today. Just before I jump in and share with you my final thoughts, I just wanted to mention about Express RS and the fact that it is open source software and you can support the work they're doing via their open collective page. It is only through the support of people donating are they able to keep doing the amazing work that they've been doing up till now. And if you haven't donated, please take some time to click on the page. There is a link to it in the description of this video. And please consider donating to allow the dev team to keep up the amazing work that they've been doing over the last 12 months and continue to develop this amazing controlling for us in the future. Now, I haven't actually flown these receivers yet, so I'm not able to give you any comments on range, but I would expect the performance on these to be exactly the same as we would find on other Express LRS receivers. They don't have a dedicated PA for the telemetry, so they're on that standard output like a standard Express LRS receiver. However, we've had people do insane range on them, as you've seen on the charts on the Express LRS website. Hopefully, we're going to see this really start to push Express LRS forward in the communities that we haven't seen Express LRS involved in before. Whilst there were barriers in the past for them today, those barriers have pretty much been smashed down. You have Radio Master delivering great radios, you have great receivers, and there's really no reason not to consider Express LRS now if you're into your fixed wing or any other type of aircraft or ground-based model as well. I'm actually going to be installing one of these in a new fixed wing aircraft that I'm going to be building over the next couple of weeks. And I'll talk about that as that happens a little bit later on. And I'm going to put the ground based one in my Rover probably and do some testing on that as well. I have done some digging and as far as I'm aware, there's nothing I need to be aware of on these with regards to the performance. So if you're looking to get yourself some PWM receivers for Express LRS, these are well worth a look. Now, just to be clear, Radio Man Master did send me these for free, as I said at the start of the video. However, they haven't seen this video before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. If you are interested in getting yourself a set of these, there is a link to them in the description. That is an affiliate link and I will receive a commission if you use it. Radio Master are the only company that I use affiliate links for on this channel. The reason for that is they are the only company I have seen that there has been just simply no problems with that has raised any concerns for me and they're the only company at this moment in time I'm actually happy to use affiliate links with. If you are interested in ordering a set, they are there. If you want to get them elsewhere though, just go directly to Radio Master's website. You can order them directly from them. They are not expensive. And if you want to get Express LRS into your PWM aircraft at the moment, I see no reason why you would not choose these. Now, if you found this video useful, please do make sure you are a subscriber of the channel. Furthermore, if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this, please do check out the link to my Patreon in the description. It is only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content on this channel. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons who have helped us not only buy the new DJI Avata drone, as well as the avatar system, but allow us to keep making content so we can keep sharing with you the information that you might not always get get anywhere else. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. Please do let me know what you think in the comments section and I will speak to you again soon.